Hi, I'm Chelsea. I I have an interesting story in that I've had the very rare form of childhood melanoma. I had my first melanoma at age 16, and then I've had a number of melanomas since then. Um, it's over 20 years since then. Um, and I've had in total six melanomas. Two of those were this past year. And of course, we all know what this past year has brought us something extra with the pandemic. Uh, just actually, I can remember um, the first Monday of the pandemic, um, my husband had noticed actually a melanoma potential spot um on the side of my face and it was on my jawline and as a female that was concerning um because i've never had a melanoma in the, my face area before um and of course i scar and um it's a concern not just having a melanoma but also the scarring that you experience or some people can experience so I was upset, but also I knew everything was shut down. So it was a concern. And uh, luckily I've always been a good advocate for myself as a patient. Uh, I've seen a number of dermatologists, um, but the one I've seen, if I ever say I need to get in right away, they will get me in because they know I've had a history and having had melanomas since I was 16. I've found almost all of them myself, except for that one just last year that my husband found, and maybe one other that my dermatologist found. So I listened to my own intuition and inner guidance, and I made sure as soon as the dermatologist's office was open, beginning of April, I made myself an appointment. And sure enough, it was a uh, severely atypical and melanoma so just the beginning melanoma in situ stage unfortunately i um i well fortunately sorry i could get in right away and um i was also given um you know the required information but also he told me as he's performing the surgery that my dermatologist said that it was in a place in my skin folds along my jawline that was kind of um the surgery was being done in line with sort of my skin folds and was in a good spot so that was going for me um as well as my nurse um i had asked her because my father-in-law has had uh, basal cell um, carcinoma on his face and he's had really good luck with healing with his scarring so um, he'd had silicone gel and I had no idea because there's so many things that they have to consider with melanoma patients and I just asked do you guys have any um, solutions for scar treatments and sure enough they have this um, cytoderma that I was able to purchase and I've been putting on my scar every day. Plus they also have Kenalog injections, a steroid uh, shot that reduces the nodular scarring you can sometimes get as well as laser treatments. Um, but then later this year, I had uh, another melanoma come up on the side of my back of my knee where the skin is really tight. And this was the first melanoma I had to actually be referred to a plastic surgeon for because of that, that tightness of the skin area for doing a wide excision. So luckily, uh, my dermatologist recommended me to someone who could get me in quickly. I didn't want to be in right before Christmas, but I got in right after um, at the, in the new year. And because uh, I'm a mom, I have two children and it was important for me to give my children a normal Christmas, but also for me to get that off right away because I do want to be their mom until I'm uh, as long as I possibly can. And uh, my children uh, deserve to have their mother alive and around. And um, so I did 
get that surgery done at the beginning of the year. And uh, I was told that I was going to have to use a splint or crutches, um, different apparatuses, because I wouldn't be able to bend my knee or it wouldn't heal properly, according to our plastic surgeon. And um, luckily, I was able to get uh, just a knee brace. Um, the name of it is escaping me right now, but it was in the pharmacy at the hospital. And um, that helped me get around and keep my knee straight. So it was able to heal up really easily and quickly. And uh, at the same time, uh, it's kind of a bleak time where we can't get together with others as much as possible. So the Melanoma Network of Canada has been really helpful uh, during this pandemic for me especially that's when i've i've joined um because of my recent melanomas and i i hadn't known of them before but i wish i had because uh, they've been really great with um support and you have to have a support system when you're going through this especially in these times with the pandemic um i have my husband i have my children and i have friends i have a a cousin who could be because melanoma is in my family history and I call her my mole sister. Uh, she lives far away actually in the United States, but uh, she's been through a lot. Um, one more melanoma than I have. So I can, I can talk to her and she understands. Uh, I also have a good friend of mine who understands because uh, she's had a few. And it's important to be able to connect with people who've been there because with the, uh, patient support groups that Melanoma Network of Canada has. Uh, I've really enjoyed those, not only because they have the, um, the meditation and mindfulness work that is really effective and just relieving stress and getting things off your mind. And mental health is super important when you're going through the melanomas. It's anxious. It's anxiety um, it can be depressing afterwards when you've had this and you're wondering why did i get this i go through that every time i've had a melanoma why did i get this what was stressful in my life that was happening that led to this in the last year or a few years what traumas have i been through uh, what sort of sunburns have i had in the last few years well it's it's hard. I actually grew up in California as a young girl, so uh, it was almost impossible to avoid the sun. Uh, but luckily, I moved to Canada um, before my first melanoma. So, anyways, that's that's also a helpful thing is is being um, out of the sun, but not to live your life indoors. There's sunscreen. There's hats. There's UPF clothing. It's important to still live your life, and um, I've definitely try to um, you know, get through those times of the diagnosis through to healing up after a wide excision to uh, living a, a life, but also to checking my moles. And the other thing I wanted to mention is um, this melanoma checker, I know as an attachment on the seminar webinar, um, but because of the Melanoma Network of Canada, um, I now have a way to check my moles even easier monthly because we all need to do uh, with moles have self checks of course and um, it's nice to have that that diameter one because I did find actually a couple since I've um, done some ch self checks in the last few months that were wider than that diameter and sure enough some of them came back moderate moderate to severely atypical and those have to be watched over time if, if they come back but they they were removed and thankfully taking photos of myself having my husband circle them for me before i go to the dermatologist so i don't have to scramble and remember where all those moles were i would have loved to have the body photography but that wasn't an option for me and where I live um, in my dermatology journey yet. Um, but um, I do make notes on my photos of where they are on my body. And I found this is a good way to compare over time if there's any changes and also to be able to keep track when you're going for your six month checkups or melanoma uh, checkup 
checkups. So um, I think those are the main things I wanted to mention. Um, the just you're you're really in charge of your of your journey of your of in your um, being an advocate for yourself to um, your dermatologist as well as having that support network around you that um, can help you uh, keep track but also keep your spirits up. I think uh, that was really important um, in you know trying to get some laughs in with friends you know even if you can't go out giving people a call and um, you know some people don't understand because they haven't been through it and or they're they don't understand that melanoma is a very serious form of skin cancer it's invasive so that's the difference between melanoma and other skin cancers and it spreads very can sp can spread very quickly so that's uh you know something i try to work on different people that uh, you know you have to talk to your diagnosis about that you know do care um that are in your life but may not totally understand um and uh and yeah i that one on the back of my knee i did want to mention was not just melanoma in situ it was in the dermis layer and i noticed maybe six six months before five months before that melanoma was removed and i from phone call to appointment to me like after i realized it it was about a month before the initial biopsy was taken once I, I noticed that mole. Um, but there was a, a tiredness that I felt for about six months before that. And that was a sign that I should have maybe took more seriously and tried to do some more checks on myself. But there's there's always so many things to, to look at when you have a lot of moles um, and you've been through a lot of melanoma. So, you go through your monthly six monthly checks yearly checks and you think you're on top of it but that was another sign that i would definitely try to um remember in the future if i was ever just going through extra tiredness but it is it is challenging in itself um, because we're in a pandemic so there's there's other reasons to feel tired or stressed i definitely uh hope everyone is um got something from this. I'm a patient, so I can relate to probably um, a lot of things that you've been through and you're not alone. So thank you very much.